Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 4, Part 1. Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Class Session 4 of Introduction to Neural Networks. In this class session, we're going to learn about feedforward neural networks and backpropagation. Feedforward is a type of neural network. Backpropagation is a way to train the neural network. As you will recall from previous class sessions, the neural networks have a weight matrix that forms the memory of how the neural network is going to actually function. Training methods are automated ways of adjusting these weights so that the neural network will behave as we expect it to. This allows the neural network to learn anticipated behavior and be able to handle cases that were not in the training set provided to the neural network. Backpropagation is not the only means by which a feedforward neural network can be trained. In this course, we're going to learn two other methods for training a neural network. We're going to learn about simulated annealing and another technique called genetic algorithms. There are other ways even beyond these three that you can train a feedforward neural network such as resilient propagation. We will also look at activation functions in this class session. Activation functions are a way that the output from individual neurons is scaled to appropriate values. In this class, we will look at three different activation functions. We'll see the linear function, as well as sigmoidal and the uh, hyperbolic tangent function for methods of scaling the output from the neural networks. We will see when you would want to use each of those as well. We are going to also look at an example of the feedforward neural network using the XOR operator. The XOR operator is a very common way of testing out neural networks. It's almost like hello world like you see in other programming languages. It's sort of the first thing that you write to test out a new neural network architecture, at least ones that would support something such as XOR. XOR is just a logic operator, much like AND or OR. We will look at the truth table for the XOR operator and see how a neural network can be applied to it. This is a fundamentally simple application of neural networks, but it lets, lets us test out the basic idea of a neural network on something very simple. We will also see how the, um, the layers of the neural network, particularly the hidden layers. So we, we've already talked about the input layer and the output layer in previous class sessions. In this class session, we are going to look at the hidden layer and see why you would even have a hidden layer as well as some general rules for picking the number of hidden layers. However, determining the number of hidden layers often gets to be simply trial and error and in a later class session we'll see how to prune neurons in the hidden layer and determine whether they're really contributing anything to the actual answer. This class session is divided into five parts. This is the first part. In this part, we're going to review the feedforward neural network and the XOR function. The other parts will discuss the topics that I just mentioned. We will begin by looking at the XOR operator and the feedforward neural network. Here you see a typical feedforward neural network. This neural network has a total of three layers. It has one input layer and one output layer. It could have more than one hidden layer, or it could have zero hidden layers. If there were zero hidden layers, the input neurons would simply connect directly to the output neuron. If there was another hidden layer, it would simply occur in between the existing hidden layer and the output layer. This is a feedforward network. Notice the arrows from the neurons only flow forward. No neuron is connected to itself or to a previous layer. This network consists of two input neurons, one output neuron, and three hidden neurons. The number of neurons in each layer can change varying on the problem that the neural network is being constructed to fix. This is a feedforward neural network. 
The XOR operator is shown here. This is the truth table for it. We've seen the XOR operator earlier in this book. The XOR operator is usually used as sort of a hello world application for neural networks. The neural network will be trained with two input neurons and one output neuron. Then a number of hidden neurons will be introduced in between to assist it in learning the XOR. The output from the neural network should match this. That is, if you're providing two zeros for the input neurons, you should also get a zero from the output neuron. Now let's look at an example of the XOR operator being trained for a neural network. First, we need to create a neural network. Here we're using the feedforward network class. This is a class provided by the book. We will look into this class later in this class session and see how it's actually implemented. But for now, we're simply adding three layers. The feedforward layer two is the input layer, which has two inputs. We're adding three neurons in the hidden layer and one output. The call to reset randomizes the weight matrix to random values. This program continues by setting up a backpropagation trainer. You can see the 0 0.7, that's the learning rate. That specifies how fast the weight matrix values are modified. Too slow, and it'll take forever to train your neural network. Too fast, and you may overwhelm the neural network and not learn anything. 0 0.9 is also a percentage. It is the momentum. The momentum specifies how much of the previous training is applied to this training. This can help the backpropagation network not get stuck on something called a local minima. We will see more about local minima later. The, um, this continues by looping over iterations, displaying the uh, epoch number. We stop at 5,000 epochs or when the training has produced an error rate that is below 0 0.001. The training continues until the neural network is trained. Once the neural network is trained, we display the results. Here you can see a simple loop that loops over all of the training data and displays the expected and the actual results. This shows the neural network actually recognizing the four states of the XOR operator. This is a simple console application that we just implemented. Let's see the output that it actually produces. When you run the program, it's gonna begin producing epochs. For each epoch, you're going to see the current error rate of the neural network. These numbers are displayed as percentages. So one would be 100% error, and closer and closer to zero is better and better error. We see that the first two epochs continue, and the error rate's at about 75%, which is pretty bad. Then towards the end, when we're on epoch 4,099, you can see that the error has dropped to below 1%. At this point, the network has been trained fairly well, and the training phase of the program completes. Once the network has been trained, we enter that loop that displays the actual output. You'll notice that the network has not been trained exactly perfectly, but pretty close. Look at the 0 comma 0 output, you'll see that the neural network has produced 0 0.008. It's pretty close. That number is nearly 0. And you'll notice for the two center uh, rows, the ideal output would have been 1, whereas it's producing 0 0.99. Further iterations would have produced results that are even closer, but this shows that the neural network has been trained in an automated way to produce the results expected from the XOR output. This beats having to manually code the, the weight matrix values like we saw in class session one, especially for things that are a lot more complicated than XOR. This concludes part one. In part two, you're going to learn about activation functions. Activation functions scale the output of neuron layers to the desired value range. We hope you will continue with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.